How would you explain why some companies achieve lasting success while others don't? And what can we change in our own organizations to improve? Take Kodak, once a leader in photography. Back in 75, the company was the first in the world to patent a digital camera. Could Walter Fallon, Kodak's CEO, have imagined that the company will become 200 times less valuable and lose the market forever? Or take Apple. Apple has met a lot of challenges in 1990s. We all remember that. But somehow the company has managed to maintain its innovation leadership positions for last 20 years. Why is this? Why are some companies more successful and what can we change in our own organizations? Some people will name Steve Jobs and leave it at that. Many assume that the leader of the company is the reason for both success and failure. But the answer is not so simple. Studies show that the leader is not enough. Only when all employees express specific informal leadership styles, only then the long-lasting success could be achieved. What kind of styles? That's what I'm going to tell you about today. I have founded 12 companies. Today I have 1,700 direct and indirect reports in five organizations. And all my professional life, I've been trying to understand the mechanisms behind the winning moments. When we did something right in the past, I asked myself, was it sheer luck or we did something repeatable? For the last several years in my new company, Eva, we have been working on artificial intelligence technologies in human capital space. It's called collaboration analytics. Through many experiments, hundreds of millions of data points, we found some answers to these questions. Why some companies more successful? And the results are especially important today when all my companies, and not only my companies, suddenly move to the remote work. Before we go forward, let's define informal leadership. I'll read. Informal leadership is the ability of a person to influence the behavior of others by means other than formal authority. What people do to influence other behavior. We ask questions and analyzed results. And we identified five styles, five ways people affect and mm, uh, others' behavior. Interestingly, that those styles, almost all of them, connected to the nature itself, to biochemistry, hormones, neurotransmitters. What kind of styles? The first style we call dominant is connected to uh, testosterone. Dominants are pushy and determined. Innovators are related to dopamine. Innovators like risk and novelty. Integrators related to oxytocin. Integrators are those people who give hug. Protectors like rules and create processes and rules. Experts influence others' behavior by high professional expertise. Each person normally combines all of those styles in different proportions. For example, I myself usually express three of those uh, styles and I'm not going to tell you which ones. I had a hunch. If these behavioral styles or traits significantly defined by nature, it should be they should be observed not only in humans but also in other social animals. And I was right. Uh, have you heard about scout bees? Those are special bees which search for food. That those bees have different dopamine levels. 
other working bees don't have that. The fact that neurochemistry defines our behavior and informal leadership was known a long time before us. But it remained unclear how to determine, how to identify those styles automatically. In EVA, when we did collaboration analytics, we had a hypothesis that information about the informal leadership styles can lay inside so-called digital footprint in the information how people collaborate in the uh, digital interactions in Slack, in Microsoft Teams, in email, in Jira, GitHub, and other corporate sources. We thought that if we could decipher that hidden information out from digital footprint of employees of the, of the teams, we could provide a magic MRI scanner for organizational health. We could provide technology which could improve uh, teams' well-being and uh, corporate efficiency. It took years and hundreds and hundreds of experiments. And we have accomplished a lot. We combined our collaboration analytics with microsurveys. And we used the answers from microsurveys to train our neural network to detect leadership styles. And it worked. Some styles now the technology can uh, uh, identify with the accuracy of 78%. Here, I want to note that the technology works only with those employees who opted into the system. This is first, second system doesn't analyze the content of messages, only metadata who sends message to who and when. And third, it's important to know technology only use corporate data, nothing personal, no LinkedIn, no Facebook, no Instagram, only collaboration information. So without reading any um, uh, message data, only metadata, who sends message to who and when, we were able to determine uh, leadership styles. How exactly can it help organizations? It turned out that the business efficiency and dollar efficiency is related to the teams which harmoniously combine different leadership styles. Let me explain that on Apple example. During Steve Jobs' 12-year exile from Apple, the company was driven, was led by dominant, strong managers, however, who could, couldn't create a culture of innovation and integration around them. Only when Steve Jobs' prominent uh, dominant and innovator, and Tim Cook, prominent integrator and protector, uh, took over the company in 1997-1998 and completely changed the corporate culture. Only then, Apple started its fantastic path towards the most valuable company in human history. MIT's Alex Pentland, a famous computational social scientist, found that the most efficient teams were those teams who expressed two important um, skills, innovation and integration. He calls the skills ex exploration and engagement. Only those teams who expressed um, uh, those uh, skills together uh, 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 did, uh, showed the most the highest efficiency. Simply put, innovators bring information to the team, and integrators uh, distribute this information and um, involve everyone in uh, collective decisions. Alex Pentland calls this phenomenon collective intelligence. Remember the scout bees? 
these have special mechanism of inf internal information transfer. When each member contributes to, uh, this information and all together the swarm creates a collective decision. Can you imagine? We are humans. We are not bees. But the research shows very similar picture. On the left, you can see a picture of a group which has strong collective intelligence. And on the right, you can see a picture of a group which has uh, weak collective intelligence. You see on the uh, right picture a dot with um, lines towards other uh, members. This is a strong, dominant, pushy uh, boss, but the whole group doesn't express uh, integration and exploration and innovation. There, is, there are no lines between the dots. Such group is less effective. This well-known picture also illustrates weak collective intelligence. This team definitely doesn't know how to properly bring information from outside and how to distribute this information inside. Okay, well, what if your group doesn't have the necessary variety of leadership styles? Does everything depend on the biology? Can we do something? The great news that we can, we can change, we, we can change the expression of innovation and uh, integration by changing the culture of existing people. Let me give you another example. Um, international large development software development company, 20 years old. However, the annual growth rate went down from 30% to 4%. And formal managers uh, believe that nothing wrong is happening. The uh, slowdown is happening because of market conditions. The uh, board of the company uh, believes differently. Board of the company, the board decided to apply collaboration analytics to identify informal leaders. And they did. They identified 156 informal leaders. The board provided um, and assigned some of those uh, younger informal leaders in authority. As a result, the company switched to agile development methodology and substituted old-fashioned in-house um, outdated technologies with uh, with new open source technologies and in a year they uh, released four new products and the you know, revenue grew by 24 percent and what happened with Kodak Walter Fallon Kodak's CEO a strong uh, dominant and uh, uh, protector he couldn't build around himself the openness and collective intelligence culture. As a result, when Kodak created its revolutionary 1.4 megapixel camera, the matrix, they couldn't take advantage of it. I began my story today by saying that some companies go into oblivion and some become long-lasting leaders. The last example I'll give you today is Microsoft. In 2013, Microsoft could become one of those fallen stars like Nokia, Ericsson, and Kodak. But wow, look what happened. New CEO of the company, Satya Nadella, a modest, soft-spoken man, um, which is protector and uh, integrator. However, firm in his action, dominant, in a year changed the culture of 130,000 employee organization. 
This is how cartoonists depicted Microsoft three years before Mandela came. Microsoft divisions were infamous in their uh, aggressive attitude. They couldn't uh, uh, see anything alien. This is why people's jaws dropped when new CEO of the company Nadella at his first public appearance demonstrated new Microsoft's product products on competitive hardware on iPads and iPhones. It was unimaginable any time before. This is true innovation and openness uh, which he showed. Satya surrounded his, himself with atmosphere of uh, integration, innovation, and openness. He, he united all employees. And you know what happened after that. Last three years, Microsoft is ranked as an, one of three most expensive companies in the world. And as of March 2020, the most expensive company in the world. Yes, the role of a leader is definitely fundamental. But long-term success cannot be achieved without a balanced team which express collective intelligence. So, to sum everything up, first, find out who your dominance innovators, integrators, protectors, and experts are. Today actually is a good time to do that uh, collaboration analytics since uh, during global pandemic, many companies um, and many technologies are offered for free. Second, identify what is missing and balance your teams and reorganize your departments if needed. And three, create a collective intelligence culture. And I'm sure your company will make a history. Long live you and your business. May collective intelligence and collaboration analytics be with you.